Fresh meat! Who the hell is this guy? And why am I dying immediately in the middle of the dungeon? Horror, surprise, the jangling chains. Oh my god, it's actually a butcher! Two days in a row I've had to deal with this master! He is just so angry with the player. Oh no, you... <laughs> oh, butcher's up. The most risk, the most to gain, the most to lose. Boy, I buy that. I hate that guy so much. Getting the Butcher ready for D4 involved pretty much every team that we have. Um, we went through concept, we worked with engineering, we worked with animation, VFX, audio, rigging, tech art, and I hope I haven't missed anyone else in there, but literally everyone we work with for Monsters was involved with the, the Butcher. The thing that really made me like super happy about jumping on was that they were like trying to create that Diablo 1 feeling. Ah, fresh meat. When we kind of explored all the different uh, areas we could go, you know, the butcher was this thing kind of lurking in the night. And everyone was like really, really into making sure that this experience was like a, a top notch, something that everyone would remember. That is one of our main emotional fantasy we want to deliver, like that kind of horror memorable moments and it's just like a fun horror where oh no no he's after me yeah <laughs> and at that point the butcher's already doing his job in terms of the fantasy right you're scared of running into him the butcher's brutal and scary and the butcher's also the funniest because he's like a demon cook and so the first time you run into him he's that new monster you think is the same as other ones maybe you're unfamiliar with the butcher in general and you hear this thing called fresh meat and you're like okay yeah i'm just gonna go fight this thing that was cool he had vo nice it sounded cool you go fight him, you start getting beat up, maybe you get away, maybe you die, and you're like, what was that? He's out there looking for players every day of the week and is not just a lackadaisical wait around for the player. He, he's out there hunting every single day. From the very beginning, the, the intention behind the player experience was set by directors, and it was very much recreate the experience of D1. So I think with The Butcher specifically, it was really about hitting the nostalgia and then leveraging the fact that at the time it was, you know, viral for the 90s in terms of word of mouth. And sometimes bringing back an icon such as the Butcher, like how do we evolve the Butcher in a modern a game, a gaming platform today? So when we started implementing the mechanics, we tried to lens everything through that pro football player. You know, he's big, but athletic. He can move faster than you think he can. So. The very, very, very first uh, iteration of the Butcher, I think, might have been uh, just like a, a cube man. Like, so a bunch of super primitive blocks, looked like a Lego like figure, and I think possibly one of our riggers, uh, Josh might even have like done the first pass, throwing in some primitive cubes. Exactly where does the fold and the cloak go so that he can move his legs around without like flopping all over the place? Making sure that the V shape of his horns was like a prominent feature. Should the butcher have four toes or three? You know, one of those is what we had in D3, and one of them might be ever so slightly more like anatomically normal. Everyone was really happy to go, let's just go a little bit further. Let's just go a little bit more. Let's do just a little bit more extra here. We had one piece of concept art that was a, a piece from Brahm that is just like a, a perfect understanding of like this character as a very like pro wrestler, linebacker, just super broad. He's got the the, the enormous girth in his in his stomach. He's just this powerful being that just like runs through anything and is just gonna take no prisoners. And that piece was just like evocative of the entire vibe. Butchers has a series of weapons. He'll charge you, he'll shout to you to slow you down. He slows you down, we try to give the fantasy of like the deafening roar. But we stripped down some of the stuff like the bone elements from the cleaver. Um, we have the sickle pull too which was important to have, right? A way to close the gap and get, get you and the butcher face to face again. Okay, one chain, one sickle, comes out, snags, pulls back. This feels like a realistic, realistic, uh, way to like accomplish the same thing while still being grounded in a, in a world that feels dark and gritty. Rather than have him do one or two big swings that if you dodge them, you're safe for a number of seconds. We made him fast, right? He kind of hits you with left, right, left, right, left, right, headbutt. You try and run away, he slows you down, pulls you back. He's got a chunk of metal he's swinging around, chopping up people. 
Let's give him something that is worth its weight, but simplistic like he is. And we we dialed it way back to like this this meat cleaver that is just a chunk of iron that he's swinging around with no effort at all. I know it was important to have the different rewards like the trophy mount and the weapon drop for the butcher. The way we wanted to reward the player was something intangible, something that's not power related, gear related, but something that can show off that like, yeah, I've done something super cool. When the players win it, I kill the butcher like, and put it on their mount as a mount trophy. Does it look like the butcher's cleaver on the mount? They are actually different. They are, they are unique from the one the butcher holds in certain ways. So they were all kind of developed alongside each other in parallel, but each of them was actually treated like its own item. Everyone's just like, the cleaver is the thing that he is just swinging around. It's the size of a human and you could barely pick it up, but he's swinging it like with no effort because he is just massive and strong. That's the thing we're gonna slap on the side of your horse and say, yep, show it everybody, I've beat the butcher. The butcher will maintain his quest to be relevant in the content and threatening to the to the folks of Sanctuary. And so people should expect to see that as seasons go on, that the butcher will remain a viable threat within those seasons. I, you know, I've heard people mention stories that the butcher is somewhat like an abomination, right? Stitched together from from various demons. The butcher is a pieced together monster. And in the lore, there's nothing that states that there is only a single butcher. Uh, the Butcher is a concept of, like, monsters being pieced together from other demons and let loose. There is a category of uh, players who will attempt to kill the Butcher in kind of unorthodox ways. And, uh, you know, the Butcher will get smart to those things and he'll start working around them. In my head, whenever we have a monster that's built this way, it's just going to, like, take out its rage on a player and look for heads effectively. Um, there's nothing saying that there won't be other butchers of different variations or sizes in the future. I have not successfully beat the butcher, so maybe one day, <laughs> you know. I was feeling it. I was like, oh, I've got enough of my gear. I've got enough of my pieces there. I He pops up and I'm like, okay, I, I think I got this. And I was humbled by one of my own creations. <laughs> it's like being a Dungeons and Dragons uh, dungeon master. We want everyone to have fun, like, from casual players to like superstar content creators. The set dressing of like, this is where the butcher is. And they're like, oh no. And then all of a sudden he goes fresh meat and comes running through a door. You have just enough time to realize what's going on. And you're like, do I fight him? Do I run? And once people start to build up enough confidence, they're like, oh, I've been playing for 20, 30 hours. I haven't seen the butcher, it's fine. And when he does show up, they're just like, oh no, I, I was not planning for that. We hope that we find the amount of time that players start to feel that they have forgotten what the Butcher experience is like. Yeah, it becomes a community puzzle to solve when you fight the Butcher. It's like, cool, what did you do to beat him, right? I think one of the things I'm you know, most proud about as a team that we hit was not only giving the nostalgic feel of like, oh my God, the Butcher's back. It's exactly how I remember him. Uh, but also hitting those marks that was like new people telling that story. I remember the first time I ran into the Butcher was in this game. And some legacy, right? Like, you know, like there's folks who are new, who've never seen this character before, who are getting that story for the very first time. And then there's, you know, players who, who know the legacy of the character of Diablo. And it brings back, you know, that memory again in a different way. It all comes together to this point where the player just goes, what is that? and why does it want my head? <laughs> and people like, you know, like me and other game developers, like, you just want to have fun and go in a dungeon, slay some demons, sometimes run away from butchers. That's, that's the legendary loot reward for, for, at least for me.